Hey folks, it's Shane from Performance TV. Today we're getting back working on our custom battery box. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my little spot on YouTube where I put electric motors into fun and interesting cars. Now, if that's the sort of project that you like and you want to see more of it and you're not already subscribed, please click the subscribe button. Um, click the notify icon if you want to get told when we've got new videos coming. So today we're going to be working on the Porsche again. Um, if you want to get caught up and see what we've been doing, there'll be a link above with uh, the details of the previous video uh, where we worked on that car. And today with the motor in place, uh, we're going to get back working on the battery box. Now, there were a few comments in after the previous video with some great ideas on things I can do to improve the mount and I will probably do some of those things but I'll do it when I next get the mo motor out of the car um, at a sensible point in the project rather than just ripping it out now. So today battery box um, and what are we going to do to it? Well I've been working on designing it in CAD and I've got a pretty solid idea of what it should look like but I want to double check all of that in the car um, and also with the, the battery pack itself based on a couple of design ideas. So we've got a bit of work to do just to, yeah, to kind of see how battery box is going to fit in this car and uh, yeah, what the battery pack is going to look like. So yeah, let's get to it. Uh, enough talking from me. Sometimes you got to upgrade which type of CAD you're using. This is chipboard aided design. All right, I know it's not chipboard, I know it's OSB, but close enough. I'm gonna turn this into a battery box. So there we have it, we've got our battery box. You know, why bother making it out of metal or some other actually useful material? Let's just make it out of chipboard. Um, this is basically the outer dimensions of what our battery box is gonna be like. Um, based on all the measurements that I've taken over the last while in the Porsche and on the battery itself. So now we need to see how this is actually going to fit in the car itself. Um, so we're going to get it out and just try and put it in place and see where where things fouled up, see how far forward in the car I can get it, that sort of thing. So yeah, let's go out to the car and um, offer this up. I am going to be so glad when the weather improves and I don't have to wear as many layers to work on the car. It is absolutely freezing today. I've got a heated vest on and four other layers and I'm still frozen. It's crazy. So I built this thing in such a way that I could play around with a couple of different widths. Um, Basically, the baseline width that I know can definitely fit is what we've got here. And then I'd added the two end panels, which are 0.9 of a centimeter, so nine mil uh, thick each, uh, just to see what I could get away with. And turns out I can't get away with anything. So we've gone back to my baseline measurements and let's try and get that in. So I think that's sitting really well at the moment. Um, it's at a good height uh, with the, so it's not too exposed at the bottom, but also not too high up in the car. It's maybe marginally higher than the um, the main block of the, the motor, but not much at all, uh, which means that the, yeah, the weight won't be too much higher uh, than the car. It's, there's a decent gap. It's a good distance forward. Um, so that means that 
we're not going to have like too much weight hanging out at the tail. Uh, my previous design had it at a, probably f two or three centimeters further back, which just would have moved the weight back towards the rear of the car. Uh, so I think, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, so this is the outer space I've got to work with. Um, and yeah, we'll just, we'll just go from there. So this is what we've got. Um, I probably can afford to drop it a tiny little bit, but I also don't want to risk um, damaging, hitting the battery box if I go over a speed bump a bit too fast or something like that. So I'm pretty, pretty comfortable with, with that height. So you can see a bit of the battery box down below the uh, bumper, but that's normal with the Porsche. You could always see uh, things like bits of the motor or the um, exhaust piping down below the bumper. All right, so that was a really worthwhile exercise. Um, well, it was great to be able to visualize it in CAD and all that. I didn't have all the information I needed, um, especially around things like where the motor, you know, little bits of the motor that kind of stick out in odd ways didn't really know where those were going to go and whether they would cause problems with the, the battery box here. But I think it's all going to be fine. Um, and now I've got enough information to kind of start figuring out uh, mounting structures and that sort of thing. And I can just pull this out whenever I need to um, after I've done a bit on the, the mounts, make sure everything's in place, figure out the next thing. Uh, so it was, yeah, it's really good. Okay, now that we know the external dimensions of the battery, we can focus on the insides. So I've um, flipped these round, flipped around the different connector and BMS points. Uh, I know there were suggestions in the comments about just flipping the battery pack. Uh, <laughs> I gave that a quick try. It's over 200 kilos and yeah, not within the, uh, the range that I can deadlift. So... Um, I end up having to do it the old school way, unbolted everything, bolted it back up. Took a couple of hours, but I just kind of sat there with a beer and slowly got through it. But it's done now, and that's great. The next thing I want to do is basically confirm the internal dimensions of the battery pack. So what I'm thinking in terms of um, kind of mounting it and holding the pack inside the battery box is to make use of the bolts that run through the um, you know four points on each each battery module, uh, but in order to do that, me that means I'll have to put the pack into the box um, without these bolts running through it, and that of course risks that it they'll expand. Now, Nissan, when they're doing um, so, when they're building these or the the subcontractor that builds these, they obviously have machines that will kind of compress the battery pack battery modules together so these can all be installed very quickly and easily um, in the factory but when these are being I guess serviced outside of that environment what Nissan recommends is to actually use a ratchet strap around the entire pack um, but you know ratchet it up tight and that will then hold everything uh, compressed so yeah what we're going to do is basically lift up the module via the, the what appear to be mounting points. I'm hoping they'll be strong enough. We'll see. Um, we'll only lift it very, very low, very, very small amount off the ground um, just so I can get, you know, a, a strap underneath and around it, basically. Um, these are proper lifting straps. I don't want to use... I may end up having to use ratchet straps to, to lift this, uh, you know, a millimetre or two at the very final construction point, but for the proper moving of this from this point high enough up that I can put the battery box underneath and drop it down into it I'm going to use proper lifting straps because I don't want things to break and the, these ones are rated to like I don't know a, a ton or a couple tons or something like that so they should be good
Okay, so that seems to be securely ratcheted together um, and there's no no weight going through the, um, the lifting straps. So what I'm going to do now is just loosen the bolts <laughs> on, uh, on a few different places and see what happens. See how wide this thing gets. Wish me luck. All right, so I've got everything loosened up here. Um, I didn't film it because I end up with my back to the camera, so that wouldn't have been very interesting for any of you. So um, loosened up all eight knots on both side, on each side. Um, so the tension in here is only being held together with this ratchet strap. Um, seems to be doing its job well. There's no really weird or unnecessary strain on the uh, front bus bars or anything, which is great. Um, the there is a slight difference between the width at the ratchet strap and the width at the end, so there's a little bit of expansion at the, the sides, um, which I'll need to take into account. I may end up using two ratchet straps, just have them slightly further spaced uh, to make it, it more consistent across the full width. What I'm going to do now is just get the tape measure, measure everything up, um, see what the difference is between when I measured it fully tightened up with the bolts versus fully tightened up with the ratchet strap and that can then go into my calculations for the battery box design. So the point where the ratchet strap itself is, uh, there's only about two degree, two a millimeter or two uh, wider than when I measured it fully bolted up. A slight bit of deflection in the plate at the end so that has meant that there's an extra couple of millimeters when you go out to the sides so yeah it's going to be a two ratchet strap process um, when I'm dropping this this in because at the end of the day it's going to be these widest points that we need the um, need things to be secure. All right, so we've got our second ratchet strap on. Uh, that definitely pulls things in a, a lot tighter. Um, still a little bit of kind of, def I don't know. It's still a little bit wider in the middle. Um, so we're just gonna have to take that into account when designing the battery pack um, to make sure that everything clears. Uh, Cause yeah, we'll just basically design the pack around the widest point and then everything can, once we tighten it in from the outside, everything will just settle into its, into an appropriate, an appropriate place. So there we go. That was a really worthwhile exercise. Uh, very comfortable with the dimension, outer dimensions of the battery box. And now know what I've got to work with on the kind of inside of it as well. Um, so that will give me a lot of detail about, you know, how thick I can make different things in terms of, you know, pieces to, to make sure that everything's strong enough and that everything's mounted securely between the car and the battery itself. Because um, we, you know, we don't want this falling out. So yeah, uh, I think we're, we're at a good point now um, that I can take this forward and hopefully get a battery box that I can use rather than one that's made out of chipboard uh, in the not too distant future. And I hope you'll join me for uh, videos on that when we get to it. I'm probably going to flip over and do a couple things on the Beetle um, in the next video, but yeah, we'll see. See how it goes. Probably depends a lot on the weather and uh, where, I, where I can work. But yeah, thanks for joining us on this and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>